So I just good morning to the Zoomers. Been great. Nice and I have been away for a week and a bit. And it was terrific. We missed you all, but I was happy to be away. <laughs> <laughs> I caught squid. <laughs> I caught some fish. Praise God. Done? No, I don't, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> if I had, you would have been hearing about it. <laughs> Actually, I've got to tell you today, Troy, what a big, good on you, Troy. I made a rust word in the place today. <laughs> but those sheep, the sheep have been grazing on the property and leaving today. And uh, well, we've got two permanent residents, and they're pregnant. <laughs> and um, I just thought I might talk about sheep. <laughs> As we're looking in the trailer, all these sheep have got different personalities. Uh, some are male, some are female, so that explains most of it. <laughs> I won't. I won't go into that too far. But, um, Sheep, they're just all different, aren't they? they and uh, God calls us his sheep. <laughs> and his sheep hear his voice. Isn't that what the Word of God says? Yes. Well, we were talking about that today, weren't we? Trying to catch the sheep. You've, still, you've got a bit of a wrestle these days catching sheep. <laughs> and um, but if they hear the voice of the Master, they'll obey. And... A lot of it relates to the master spending time with the sheep in the old days. And if he spent time feeding the sheep and having time with the sheep, they would know him. And they'd be obedient to what he would do or want them to do. They would follow him. In fact, he wouldn't have to try too hard. <laughs> These days, because of the constraints of busyness, we don't get to know our sheep that well, do we? Um, but God's been speaking to me. And because we've got such a long prayer chain at the moment, we've got so many people on the prayer chain, uh, which brings me to that point, we've got to pray for young uh, Jude and Tim. Jude was taken to hospital at 1.50 this morning. Yeah, no, no worries, Pete. Jude was uh, taken to hospital, and so I want to pray for her right now while, while we're talking about it. Amen. I've got to tell you, when I pray, I pray with the joy in my heart. And um, I don't pray looking at the problem, I pray looking at the answer. We have the answer. Christ is our answer. Jude, if you're watching this, hey Jude, don't take it back. <laughs> Sing a sad song and make it better. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's just, that was for Jude, okay? <laughs> Father, we just thank you for Jude. We just thank you that there's a joy coming into her heart as you are restoring her brain, that every tumour that's tried to grow in that brain, Father, is being dismissed, cast out, told to leave by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we thank you for this. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We give you thanks, Lord. We thank you for what you've just done in her. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you know that's how we, that's how we be, should be praying? With prayers and supplications. The, the, um, mate, the majority of Christians today, they're, they're so worried about everything. <laughs> We're supposed to worry for nothing. <laughs> Do you hear me? What's the word of God say? Worry for nothing, but by prayer and supplication, make your requests be known to God with thanksgiving in your heart. <laughs> you know, for years, when I first came in the kingdom, I'm thinking, how do we get answers from God? He just spoke one thing in my heart, and it's still there today. He said, the prayer that's in your heart, believing, pray believing. It's a, it's, he calls it the sacrifice of praise, the fruit of your lips. 
So when we start sacrificing in praise, it does, doesn't have to be in music. It can be in our prayer time, in praying in the Spirit. He says he gives us a language to pray in where the Holy Spirit takes hold of what we need because we don't know what we need. But he does. And so the more we give our tongue over to God, the more we're giving over this incredibly powerful tool to change everything that's in front of us. Everything. I, I, I look at these people who are suffering so much. I, I've had a two-year battle myself and I've been coming through it and I've been thanking God and I've been finding that quiet place for myself with God, the quiet place. Because the way he taught me was come and spend time with me. Come and spend time with me. And so I started spending time. I remember when I first came into the kingdom, Denise would tell you, I used to drive her nuts. I'd be up in the middle of the night at 2 or 3 in the morning, 1 in the morning, just getting up just to get time with God, making specific time. I was doing concrete work at the time, and so I'd be up at 5 or 6 to go off to a concrete pour, so I needed to make time for the day before I, and the day even started. And then I read that blessed is he who he finds up in the morning watches. That, you know what those morning watches are? The Jewish watch is between 9 and 12 and 12 and 3. He says, blessed are those he finds up at those times, because that's a sacrificial thing to get up and spend some time. It's a thing that you do willingly. I, I used to, before this place was ever bought, he used to get me up. I'd jump into my car at 3.34 in the morning and I'd go down the point. And I had an excitement in my heart that I'm about to meet with the living God. <laughs> I've got to tell you, that sadly lapsed a lot in my life as I've been getting older because I'm getting lazier. Well, at least I can admit that and say sorry. But I've got to tell you, to me, I have to repent of that. I have to repent that I know the way and choose my flesh to, to win out. I know you're not like that, you're all perfect. <laughs> but I do have this problem <laughs> and I'm, I'm confessing it today. <laughs> but I've got to tell you, without the time, we're not going to get any, anywhere with God. We're not going to grow. We're going to spin our wheels and stay in one spot. And God's trying to grow our spirit man. And so I started asking questions. I said, Lord, how come we're not getting the answers as quickly as we used to? And I was shocked with what I got. Can I, can I share that with you today? Because I think it's relevant. I want answers. We've got so many sick people. We've seen so many miracles over the years. And right now they should be growing in, in, uh, in number and in power. We should be getting instant answers at times. I know God trains us with patience, but I've been used to getting answers quickly. And when it's not happening, then it causes me to question things. I don't know about you, but I want to know why. And God wants me to know why. He's taught me that way ever since he, he came into my life. Praise God. Go to John uh, chapter 15. Praise God. How many, how many of you know there's lots of ways of hearing God? Lots of ways. I can give you a whole list today if you want. <laughs> I like it best though when he speaks to me in that small inner voice. Brings a conviction into my heart of what I should be doing. And if I act upon it, I see the result. There's a manifestation of the power and the glory and the kingdom of God. And so I just want to read something to you. And I'm going to ask you a question that you obviously need to ask yourselves as well, okay? John 15. Actually, I may as well read it through for you, and we'll stop at 7 and 8. I'm the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. These are the words of Jesus. They're in red, okay? Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he promises that no, that it may bear more fruit. He prunes it that it may bear more fruit. 
you're already clean because of the word which I've spoken to you. So I'm already clean. This is where most Christians still look at themselves and condemn themselves. <laughs> you're already clean. You gave your heart to Jesus Christ. You gave him your life. You've got the key of repentance on a daily basis. All the religions in the world haven't got what you've got. <laughs> exactly. It's exactly that. They haven't got what we've got. Amen? What a privilege. Privilege people. You're already clean because of the words which I have spoken to you. Abide in me. Say abide. abide. Do you know what abide means? Yes. Abide comes from the root word abode. <laughs> An abode is somewhere you live. It's a house. Abide in Christ. He becomes your house. You become his. Christ in me, the hope of glory. He comes to live on the inside of you. You're living with Jesus Christ. That's what abiding is. But abiding isn't just that. You can live in a house and ignore the other people in the house. <laughs> Anybody know that? <laughs> you can live in a house and still ignore everybody else who's in that house. But God says abiding is getting to know each other. Amen? He wants you to get to know him. So if you abide in him, you're going to get to know him. If you get to know him, you're going to want to do what he wants. You're going, to, you're going to do it with a joy in your heart. Most Christians walk around like they've been drinking lemon juice. <laughs> it's true. They say, you can be just like me, miserable. <laughs> I've got to tell you, there's no misery in me. Denise will tell you. I'm happy 99% of the time. The only time is when someone tries to steal the sheep. No, I'm only, <laughs> only <joking. laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy most, most of the time. Real happy. And, and I found that the joy of the Lord has become a strength over the years. It's no good looking at a problem. You know, there's so many people who are... Who are We've got a syndrome of misery. <laughs> they worry about every single thing. You know what a syndrome is? You can break it down to sin being the first part of the drone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Doctors can't find out what's wrong with you when you have a syndrome. They can find out what's wrong with you when you've got a virus. But when it comes to having a syndrome, they don't know the cause. In fact, science is still racking its brain trying to find out what's causing all these sicknesses in people where they're depressed and oppressed. And generally it's because there's something in there that they haven't dealt with. They can't forgive themselves. They feel shame. They don't think they're good enough. I'm not going to look at you. But I've got to tell you, every one of us gets touched by that at times. Because we don't cast our cares under Jesus, the thing he tells us to do. And if we're obedient in this one thing, I want to tell you, most of the sickness that's in your body and pain will leave. Anybody interested in this? Praise God. Because this is what Jesus paid the price for, that we would have his peace. He is the Prince of Peace. And we need to enter into his peace. We need to come into that place. We need to enter in a place called aggressive peace, something you can feel and touch. And that's what he paid for. He paid for that price. You find when people come into peace, they're healthy, they're happy. Everything starts to follow them like blessings. They become a blessing magnet. Blessing follows them. They bless everywhere they go. And, and God wants us to understand this. He wants us. It's the peace that comes from God. I want to I read something to you. I just wonder where I read it. Just, just let me read something to you. That's not the one. I've got another one over there. Anybody want this book? It's yours. <laughs> Share it. Will you give it out to someone? Exposing the spiritual roots of disease. 
Mate, that word disease is a beauty, isn't it? This ease, no peace. Amen? No peace. That's the cause of disease. But a syndrome is a different thing. I'll just... Oh, here we go. I folded these pages over, so it must be in there somewhere. Stress disorders. Stress disorders or syndromes are a result of fear, anxiety, stress, guilt and shame. If you're struggling with these conditions and you have a disease or a syndrome or if you have one on the way, with stress disorder the enemy causes you to lose your peace. Well, there you go, exactly what we're sharing right now. By producing fearful thoughts in you that affect your central nervous system. You begin to feel pain, you, ha you have brain fog, and you experience a host of other symptoms. And then you need medication to manage it. Anybody here need medication to manage stress? Don't put your hand up. Okay? <laughs> Praise God. Among the most common stress disorders are fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, irritable bowel syndrome, ulcerative colitis, chronic insomnia, migraines and acid reflux. Have I mentioned anything that you've been going through? I'm not looking, okay, <laughs> I'm just asking. Paul wrote, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1.7 If you have unresolved fear, anxiety and stress, you don't have any power. You don't have a sound mind because it's filled with stressful thoughts and imaginations and you're not able to give and receive love without fear. That's interesting, isn't it? Can you see the flow on from your stress? Praise God. Still not what I want to tell you. Hmm. That's not what I want to tell you. I want to tell you what the Lord put in my heart this morning. Praise God. Can you bear with me then? Because I think this is important. We get that. All I know is if you deal with the stress in your life, You end up with a good heart. You end up with a good heart, hear me? And peace, that aggressive peace we keep speaking about. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask what you will. We're on John 15 again. Abide in me and I'm in you, as a branch can't bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Say without him you can do nothing. Can you see what abiding does? You get to hear what God's saying and then you can act upon it. You know, if you've got a problem and you're running around like a chook with your head cut off trying to fix it, you get in deeper water. <laughs> but if you shut yourself down, get on your knees for a little time and find out what's happening, what's causing the problem, all of a sudden you can act in the right manner and see a miracle in your own life. These syndromes that we're involved in, if you start to line up with the Word of God and abide with Him, I'm going to tell you now, they're going to start disappearing. They may not happen instantly, but within a few days you'll start to see an incredible change in your life. If you start to give thanks to the Lord, you're invoking spiritual principles that work and bring peace into our lives. If you spend time with Him, and He spends time with you, you walk in peace most of the time. All of these syndromes that come on us is type 2 diabetes. That's my next battle. 
and I'm beating it in a lovely way. I'm just eating meat. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds terrible, no? I'm whacking protein into my body again. <laughs> and that's, that's wonderful. <laughs> I do fast from time to time. <laughs> but I'm, I'm packing myself with protein. I found out what it is that I need to do to get me right. I need not to worry. I cast my cares under Jesus for he cares for me. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. For he cares for you and he knows what you're going through. Why don't you cast all your cares upon the Lord? When trouble comes, call him. Just call him. I've got to tell you, you start to learn to do this and all the stress is going to leave your body. All the stress is going to leave your body. Call him. Just call him. Call out in the name of the Lord. He says all who call out in that name will be saved. Can you believe that? I believe it with my whole heart. When I'm in trouble, I call out. Amen? What about Samson has a fight, slays in a paddock, slays over a thousand men with the, with the jawbone of an ass, and then he, he's depowered, he's tired, and he cries out to God and he says, God, you wouldn't have given me this victory and left me to die like this. And God opens up a spring for him. Water comes out of a rock in a place called Lehi. Amen. And there's a little footnote in the Bible that says that place, Lehi, means caller's spring. Caller's spring. You call out, you don't thirst. You call out, you don't have a need. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What's want mean? Want means you've got a need. Want means that you want for nothing if the Lord becomes your shepherd. You want to abide in God? Let him be your shepherd. Let him lead you. Let him guide you. We need answers for all these people at the moment, but we're not being led by the Lord to find out what the key is. Amen? I've got to tell you, there's a lot of us here if we set our heart to pray for these people on a daily basis and ask the Lord, what's the answer? What is the key? Let me, let me say this to you. Abiding in God releases power. You know, you can't stand in the presence of God and not gain the power of God in your life. It's like plugging into an electricity point and getting charged up. You know, darkness cannot stand in the presence of God. Do you know that? That's scriptural. That's in the book of Proverbs. Darkness can't stand in the presence of God. So go and spend time in the presence and you see that all the darkness has been inside you, all the care, all the, all the worry, all the fear. Gone. Gone. You're walking with God. There's no better place to walk. There's, there's actually no other place to walk. Permanent. That's, that's where we should all be walking. I want to show you something. As I keep reading, yeah, these scriptures are they're very special to me because God spoke these to me audibly. Do you, do you know what I mean when I say audibly? I mean a voice out of heaven says to me, Wrath. John 7, verse 8. John 15, verse 7 and 8. John 15, verse 7 and 8. He says, on the basis of this, he said, every place you've been praying for it becomes yours. Do you hear me? Every place you're praying for becomes yours. You have to overcome in the spirit before you overcome in the natural. And every place I pray for is a spiritual battle. Once that's won, the natural battle comes out. You'll see the result of your prayers. And so the Lord taught me this way. Up at the bluff, in those early mornings, 
he would speak these words to me. I was praying for all the towns around here and I was praying for the people and I was setting these places apart. And then in the end he said, okay, he said, every place you've been praying for is now yours. Go out and do meetings. So for a year there, I think we ended up doing, what, 13 meetings in different towns around the state here. All the local towns, Strathalbyn, Mount Cuppus, Normanville. We did meetings in all these places. We would go and hire a hall and advertise a healing meeting. And once a month, we would do a town. And we used to have a lot of fun, didn't we? We'd uh, belly would get us a bus, so we'd all jump on the bus. And, and we, you'd have good fun going down there, I can tell you, because we're, <laughs> we're pranksters, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have fun going down there, but we would turn the town upside down at the time, every town. Strathalbyn was the first place. And uh, so the people who come from Strath, uh, we met there at that time. You guys, where did we meet you? We met you at uh, Mount Barker, I think, didn't we, at the time? Praise God. Um, Malcolm Sorrell, Janine Hendo, those guys all have the... The Gales, uh, do you remember Lynn and Kay Gale? Yeah. All of those we met at Stratham. They formed the basis of our congregation to start with. And we would meet, and the kids were all growing up, so we had all the youth growing, and it was a, we had the biggest youth group on this coast at the time. And unfortunately, all the youth had to go find work. And it's not local most of the time, so. Our youth dwindled, but my God, they're a powerful youth group. And every one of those kids, we keep in touch with them, are still serving the Lord in some capacity or other. One of them became a Jet Star pilot. He was the leader of our youth. He was an exemplary kid. I can't, you wouldn't believe it. He was, uh, everything he touched, he excelled at. Sapsars of footy, Australian champion uh, sailor, <laughs> Australian champion. Uh, on the Kobe cats. That's just everything he touched, he just excelled at. He had the Lord in him. And, and he didn't go to uni at 16, he decided to study flying. <laughs> so, so he studied flying. He had his pilot's license before he had his road license. <laughs> God blessed him in everything he did. And, and all the other kids too, they end up at YWAM, leaders in YWAM. One of them is still in Los Angeles re leading a YWAM mission. Um, they, they went all over the world. It's, it's fantastic. I just I saw the fruit of those days of abiding deeply in God. And I know he's calling us back to it as a church, not just me, all of you. <laughs> abiding in God. Abiding in God. Say abiding. abiding. Praise God. Then he goes on to say, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Say for you. For you. What do we desire now? We're desiring all these people to be healed. There's our, there's our key right there. Abiding in God. You'll abide in peace. The peace of God is where you'll abide. That's his abode. Peace is where you go. Perfect love casts out all fear. That's the place we need to live in. Christians need to live in peace, not be fearful, not have all these syndromes, because we've got the key to sin. <laughs> Repent. Repent is the key to sin. <laughs> Ringing the bell is good. <laughs> Repent. Repent is the key to sin. But brother, I'm not a big sinner, brother. <laughs> I, I, the number of times I hear that <laughs> we're all sinners <laughs> praise God just make a, make a point of before you go to sleep say Lord forgive me for everything I've done wrong today I, I repent, I confess it to you if you confess your sin to Christ you're bringing it in, into the light therefore there's nothing can condemn you what did Jesus say Satan has nothing in me Amen. He knew the key. He would run to the Father every night. Jesus would go to the Father. And through his prayers, it's in Hebrews 5, 17. 
His time here on earth, it was through his prayers and supplications that were heard, he was able to be saved. That's going to mess with the theology of it, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. But he was showing us the way. He was showing us that to keep a very short account and all the worry and distress will leave you. Amen? Isn't that lovely? My God, we're privileged people. Okay, then he goes on. He said, if you abide in me, my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit as so you will be my disciples. How many Christians have we got in the place today? Is that all? How many Christians have we got? <laughs> How many disciples have we got? Do you know what disciples are? Disciplined ones. <laughs> Disciplined ones. <laughs> what would you rather be, a Christian or a disciple? Disciple. <laughs> Disciplined. I've got to tell you, I'm not that disciplined these days. <laughs> disciplined ones. If anybody asks me, are you a Christian? I say, no, I'm a disciplined one. <laughs> you know how much discipline it took to get me up in the mornings? I had to have a wife with a good right leg and she'd kick me out of bed. <laughs> she didn't even do karate. <laughs> He'd kick me out of bed because he'd wake me up and I'd be tossing and turning. Shall I get out? Shall I not? The blanket's got me. No, I won't. Yes, I will. <laughs> I know you don't have that problem, but I do. <laughs> Disciplined ones. So when people say to me, you're a Christian or a disciple, I want to be a disciple because it's the disciple that gets answers to his prayers. It's the disciple who abides with God. Amen? It's the disciple who knows where to go when he needs an answer. It's the disciple who's a sheep that hears the Father's voice. It's the disciple that can walk in the power of God because you've paid the price. You've gone to a place where you put your flesh out of the way, say, put my flesh out of the way, and I decided to live out of the Spirit. Isn't that marvellous? Amen. I decided to put my flesh out of the way and live out of the Spirit. That's the very thing Jesus came to earth to do. To get our spirit man born again, alive to God, because what had happened over, was it 6,000 years? 4,000 years? 4,000 years. Over 4,000 years, the soul, which is the will and the intellect and the emotions, took over. God had made us spirit primarily. He wanted to talk to us through our spirit. But no, we'd rather do what we wanted to do, let our will come in. I'm not looking. <laughs> I'm not looking at anybody. <laughs> wanted our will. He, he wanted our will in subjection to our spirit. But over the years, that had all turned around. It had all turned around. We started to be more motivated by what we wanted to do, by our intellect, some peanut telling us that this, this is the way to go. <laughs> and we took more notice of man than we did of God. Amen. Our emotions, oh my God, those emotions have got a lot to answer for. Do you know why? Because most people are driven by their emotions and you know your emotions are going to be up one day, down the next. And your emotions are shaped by what you look at most. What are you looking at most? If you look into the Word of God, if you abide in me and my Word abides in you, your emotions become shaped by the Word of God. You want answers to prayer? I'm showing you what's causing us not to have them. If you look at the negative side of, the, of the, what we're going through as a church at the moment, praying for all these sick people, and 
Mate, we just had one die last week. Do you know how disappointed I was? I was away when I heard Big Fred. Remember Big Fred on Wednesdays? Giant of a man, beautiful man of God. Liver cancer got him. Praise God. I was talking to him the week before. We were pray He's on our prayer chain. He's not now. He's with the Lord. So, you know, while I was away, I had a lot of time just to think about different things again. And I, I wanted some answers, and God's given me an answer. And he said, if my people abide, he said, this is a syndrome of my people not abiding in me. Do you hear me? This is a syndrome of my people playing church, appeasing their own conscience by once a week coming to a meeting. Appeasing their conscience by coming once a week to a meeting. Good Christians, yep, they go to church, wonderful. <laughs> but I've got to tell you, this is a 24-7 walk with God. That's what abiding is. 24 hours, seven days a week, bringing everything before God and yet not being religious, still being a happy soul. Why? Because the greatest joy that you can ever have is serving God and seeing the results of serving God, seeing people get touched and changed and healed, delivered, saved, set free. There's no joy in the world that you can get any other way. But when you see God moving on people's lives supernaturally, supernaturally, seeing the results of your prayers because you're disciples. And he says, if you abide, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask what you want and it shall be done. What do we want? We want all these people healed. That's what I want. That's my heart. I want to see all these people healed. And then he says something like, greater love hath no man and he lay his life down for his brother and sister. What do you think that means? Greater love hath no man than he lay his life down for his brother and sister. Well, when these people are suffering, we've got answers and we can pray on their behalf. Ask God to heal them and it'll be done. And it'll be done. Do you believe this? Let's hold all these people up this morning, okay? Just re say this. Uh, there's somebody right now feeling a bit convicted. I'm sorry, but this, it's supposed to convict you. <laughs> it's supposed to bring you to a place where you actually ask, <laughs> am I doing the right thing or the wrong thing? Who is this peanut up here preaching to me? <laughs> Praise God. Well, I've got to tell you, I've got to repent of this same thing myself, okay? I started well and I want to finish well. I want to finish well. You're all under arrest, a whole lot of you. <laughs> I can be the sheriff today. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Just say this to the Lord, Lord Jesus. If there's any ounce of unforgiveness in my life, show it to me. Cause me to forgive. I repent of harbouring unforgiveness in my life. If I've been disobedient by not coming and spending time with you, Lord, I repent and I ask for forgiveness. Draw me near. Your word says if I draw near to you, you will draw near to me. Please draw me near today. Touch my life. Make these years that are in front of me fruitful. Let me bear much fruit. Let people be touched, saved, healed, delivered and set free from demonic oppression because I'm abiding in you. Oh, glory to God. Oh, thank you, Luna. Give me thanks. Just give me thanks. Lord, if I've been a worry ward, if all I do is worry, forgive me. I choose to make my needs known to you in prayer and supplication. 
<laughs> oh, glory. In prayer and supplication, Lord. And to give you thanks because you're already acting on what I'm asking. Help me to abide and stay in that place. Help me to make you my house. Oh, my God, the power of God's on me at the moment. I don't know about you, but I know what I'm getting. I think I just plugged into 240 volts there or 1,000 volts. I don't <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Cause me to draw near, Lord, closer and closer so that when we pray, our prayers will have great results. And the world will know it's because we're praying. By this they'll know that your hand is upon us. By this we'll bear much fruit, and that fruit will be evident to all who look. Amen. Oh, Father, I ask this in Jesus' name. And all the saints said, I, I'm sorry, there's the presence of God all over me at the moment. I, Actually, I think we'll have communion. Can we have communion? Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. While I was mulling on that, what's the name I... Who, who dropped all the books in? Wendy, did you bring all those books in, did you? Did you? If you can't talk, you could only concentrate on one thing. <laughs> Did you, did you give me some grapes there, bud? All right. He'll be back. Schwarzenegger said that too. <laughs> you were busy talking. <laughs> I was busy yakking. Thanks, bud. Wendy, did you bring these books in? Thanks. <laughs> I'm, I'm knocking this one off, and after that I'm giving it to my, my daughter. I read this book about... 12, 14 years ago, I was on a missionary trip to India and somehow I got hold of it. I think it must have been the flavour of the month. <laughs> you know, the book, the book places uh, start to um, uh, forever ruin for the ordinary. Joy Dawson. Joy, Joy Dawson's a Kiwi prophet. Where's the Kiwi? You're not here. She's, Joy Dawson is a Kiwi prophet, very sharp woman, and um, had a wonderful relationship with God, still has, I, I, if she's alive. This book was the flavour of the month. It was being promoted by the bookshops. That's, I mean, that's an indictment, isn't it, really? All the Christians are led by the bookshop. <laughs> you know, they start to speak about the prophetic move and they all become prophetic move preachers. I've got to tell you, you better get it from God. <laughs> there's not a lot of there's not a lot of apostles, the apostolic teaching. Do you know there's not a lot of apostles around? Because people won't give themselves over to become apostles. They actually got to read the job description and that's terrible. You get shipwrecked a few times, whipped within forty <laughs> strokes, three times in his life. Yeah, and they want to call themselves apostles and they've never suffered a headache. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Would you agree with that? I, I only know a few, and I've been walking with the Lord now nearly 40 years, and I only know a few apostles, real apostles. One of them, Sampy, you know, the Indian guy that comes here? Sampy was kicked out of home. He had a good job as a supervisor on an oil plantation, found the Lord. Everything went to pieces. <laughs> and I've got to tell you, that's sometimes a pattern when God's bringing a man up through, through his life. He loses everything so he can gain everything. Amen? And I, I, Thampy, my God, he used to get a jam tin, had it shaped like a trumpet, and he'd go to the bus stations because there was always thousands of people transiting India, and he'd climb up on top of the roof of one of the buses, he'd start preaching, we're in a tree, and he'd start preaching the gospel. And, you know, years later a lady came up to us, she said, I gave my heart to the Lord when I heard a voice at night at a bus station in Trivandrum. 
and it was him. It was him. Today, he's got 4,000 churches started being thrown out in the street. Today, he's got 4,000 churches. I'd say he's an apostle, wouldn't you? <laughs> they're, they're very few. Very, very few. And yet, all that teaching comes out, the apostolic teaching. My God, every congregation should have an apostle in it. Fivefold ministry. Do you know that? If you allow the Lord to mould you, you're going to end up fitting in one of those job descriptions. Pastor, evangelist, teacher, prophet, or apostle. You're going to fit in one of those categories. Everyone in this place can fit in one of those categories. Some of them haven't got through governments and helps. And that lowly gift of tongues can put all the rest of you. That's the one thing we can all do. So you can fulfil the function in the body already. But this, this lady here, Joy Dawson, someone gave me that book. And I was thankful as I read it, even though she was the flavour of the month. And I didn't uh, used to abide by that. I used to get my revelation just straight from God. But this was given to me in India. And so thanks, Wendy. I'm, I'm going to reread it because it was just so relevant at the time. It was just so, so revealing of the things that we were doing were how she was training her people. And she'd been trained... If you want to train as a prophet, that'd be a great book for you to read. Anyway, um, I was in a plane f flying from Goa to Mumbai. I was, I'd taken a team of guys over and they were all going back by train, but I had to get home. So we all parted ways in, in Goa. And I'm on the plane and there was a guy sitting next to me who was flying to Mumbai. And uh, he was an Indian fella. And there was a seat between us. And so I was reading that and I just put it down in the seat between us and he said, oh, he said, could I have a look at that please? I said, yeah, certainly, have a look. He said, uh, are you a Christian? I said, yeah, I'm a disciple. I said, um, I've been looking at you, that's why I put the book down. God just told me that you're very unhappy in your job, that you wanted to be trained as something else. He just started crying. He said, yes, I'm a chemist. He said, I wanted to be a journalist. He said, I'm unhappy in my job. So I gave him some words that God had spoken to me. And I said, you need to give your heart to the Lord. So in that plane, that man gave his heart to the Lord immediately. The gifts make the way hearing God's voice to someone for the reasons the people are like they are will make the way. The more time you spend with God, the more time you're going to open yourself up to revelation knowledge. The more time you're going to get to hear God's voice. The more time you spend, it's almost in relation to the time you spend, your hearing increases. <laughs> you want to be a sharp shooter in God? Spend time with the Lord. Spend time with the Lord. Get to know him intimately. You know what intimately means? That's also based on intimacy. Into me, see. Into me, see. When I come to this table, I come so God can look into me. And I can look into him. That's what this is. Ask him to look into you today. Ask him to look into you. And that, start your abiding in that place. Can you do that? So as you come to this table, if he shows you something, you've got to release someone, just do it quickly. So this becomes a blessing to you. Amen? The so Father, in the meeting, see the day. He's been speaking to me like this for days. And I'm so thankful. I'm going to go away again because <laughs> I need to restore some things in my own life. We've been serving for a long time without a break. 
and so I'm, I'm going to uh, I'm going to take intermittent trips while we can. Praise God. Praise God. I thank God I've got a good team around us these days who will take over. You know, right, Phil, Pauline, Ricky, guys have been and share what they've learned over the years and you'll benefit greatly. Amen. And Father, I just thank you right now as you come to this table. Look into me, Father. Just ask him to look into you. Or if you know, you ask him to look into me. Because <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> I want to know something. I say, Lord, what's the problem there? <laughs> Praise God. And he releases it. But he also always releases it with a point to help, not to condemn. So never be fearful if God speaks to you through another person. Amen? Because that's one of the ways people hear. Your testimonies are one of the ways people hear. We give a testimony. Sometimes your life is involved in that testimony. Or it's relevant to what you need. So don't be frightened to share that with people. This table we're at right now is a place where we share with God. He shows us, we can give it out in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. As often as you do this, remember me. So that book with that man of the Lord in that plane that day, and yet there's so much in that book that every Christian needs to know about. Have you read this? Do you want to back after I finish with it? Oh, yeah, maybe I'll do it. I think, I think everybody... I'll, I'll just give you some headings here. God speaks through what we see, through visions. He speaks through dreams, through angels. Writing with his finger. I'd like to see that one. The fickle finger of God. <laughs> he did that, you know, with, who was it, Hezekiah? Moses. Yep, yeah. and with Moses on the tablets, Ten Commandments. Hezekiah, what, I'll tell you what he said there. He said, many, many tekel apharsan. That's the jury. You've been weighed in the scales and found wanting. Okay, that's the Hebrew. He spoke that to me once as a young Christian when I was working. I was doing a soffit aligning in a, uh, in a garage and these words kept coming at me. Many, many tekel up harassing. I was saying, what is that? What on earth is that? When I opened, I said, oh no. <laughs> Change turned me around in a hurry. <laughs> turned me around in a hurry. He can speak through a finger writing words. Through rainbows, that permanent reminder of God's covenant to mankind, eh? What about through creation? Look at a tree, a leaf, the intricate design of the things he's created. A pillar of fire and a pillar of cloud. Do you know, I, I ended up in Malaysia and uh, at, a, at a place called Bahau, in the Jensen Highlands, a little town right down these steep mountains in the, in the valley. And it was the first place I ever preached in Malaysia. And the pastor's name was Teo, Pastor Teo. He'd, he'd been here how many times? Half a dozen times, Teo? He used to pray downstairs in my place when it wasn't even lined, you know, like he'd come, stay ruggedly. It wasn't the best motel in the world. I was still building it. And he'd, he'd sleep downstairs, walls unlined, one or two PowerPoints <laughs> uh, hooked up. But he would love being there because he could pray because that house was a prayerful house. He did meetings for us. But one of the things that struck me with that man was in his church, he had the pillar of cloud one side and the pillar of fire the other. Whenever he preached, that's what would turn up in his church. <laughs> he, uh, he was affiliated with Morris Cirillo in the States. And he would travel there often, and then he would come here as well. In fact, I should invite him over again. Um, but God speaks through a pillar of fire and a pillar of cloud, and I've seen the pillar of cloud in our own 
in our own ministry where it turns up everybody gets healed, everybody. Every solitary soul gets healed. That's, that's what we want. We want to see the manifestation of the power of God. And I've got to tell you, we're on the cusp of these things breaking out again if we abide. Do you hear me? Yeah. If we abide. If we abide. We're on the cusp of seeing these things again. Praise God. A consuming fire. He can speak as a consuming fire. What did he do with Abraham, that burning bush? Supernatural signs, another way he speaks. Circumstances. Some people don't believe circumstances are speaking to them, but God will bring circumstances to change the way you're walking. The Aram and the Thurim, that was on the, the priests. That's like casting lots. Christians today would say, that's gambling. Yep. <laughs> it is. But if, if God does that, it's God's prerogative. We want to dictate how we receive stuff from God. We're so religious, we won't allow him to touch us. Amen? Casting lots, a visual method of obtaining God's direction. When the children of Israel were being allotted their inherited land in Joshua 8.8, 8, it was also the method the apostles used when they were asking God, who was to replace Judas? They were still doing it. <laughs> Praise God. Direct conversations in our mind. Anybody have direct conversations in their mind with God? I do, regularly. I might be walking in a direction, it will just come in there and he'll speak. I don't want to start the second preach. Okay? <laughs> but I want to tell you, God wants you to start sharpening your hearing. And what we share today, the abiding in God, will cause your hearing to be sharpened in God. Don't we want that? Father, I just thank you for today. I thank you for the message. I thank you that you help us put it into place. And I thank you for everything you're doing in my life at the moment and in the lives of the people in this place. I thank you for the healings that you're releasing. I'm just going to name those people as we close up. I thank you, Father, for Tim and Jude, for Jude being totally healed. For Joyce, who's not here at the moment because she's going through things. Um, Catherine Lee. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Peter Jervis. He's a friend of mine. Pardon? Bonnie. Yeah, Bonnie. Where are you, Steve? Yep. Bonnie, Steve's daughter. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. We had another miracle here the day that we had the healing. I don't know if I should. I can't tell at all. Just, just hang on while we were praying. Just let me finish with those people and I'll let you say something. Incredible. Yep. I, I, I want to hear it. Thank you, Lord. Who else is. I don't want to miss anybody out. Peter. And Wilma. And Leper. Who else we got in that prayer chain? I've got a list at home. Yep, Marlene's sister. Peter Backer. Fred passed away last week. Jill and Norm. Jill and Norm, yep, her own people. But we've got we've got serious cases who have got cancer. And hey, Ruth. Ruthie, my sister-in-law. Oh, she's, actually, she's doing well, I've got to tell you. They come and live at our place every weekend while she's in treatment in Adelaide during a week. And I think she's on her last week this weekend, she. But she's blessed while she's living at our place during the weekend, you know that? <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Father. Who, who was that one? Nathan. Praise God. Father, as we've named these people, I thank you we receive their healing. Thank you, Lord, that peace is coming upon their lives right now, that all their cares are being cast under you, that this time you, are, you would maximise their relationship with you, Lord, in Jesus' name. 
And all the saints said? Amen. Now. That um, lady here in the wheelchair the other week when she walked. Oh, yes. That was a beauty, wasn't it? Well, after you'd all gone out there to eat, I went over to her. Yep. And put my arms around. I can't go into great detail. Yeah, that's and right. She exposed to me something that happened when she was 16. Yep. It came to her mind and she revealed it. And I saw her eyes change from yes. fear, uh, holding herself back to a woman that felt she was free to be able to express yep. something she's never expressed. Yep. And I don't know how old she is now, but she's only 16. That's amazing. And she revealed it when I put my arms around and held her. That was the woman that was here the other Yeah, Robin. Week. Robin, lovely lady. She was uh, standing yeah. up last Sunday. She was, she was standing up last week. Yes. See the healing started. I love it. That was fantastic. Do you know, every time we touched her foot, the power of God. I was <laughs> The power of God went into it. You see it. Yeah, <laughs> it was amazing. You, you are conduits for the power of God. You, you certainly are. Yeah, ain't that wonderful? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yep. Amen. Well, look, we've all got stuff. And if you want to abide in God while you're in there, that's where you deal with this stuff. And it's, it's between you and him, you know. It's between them and God. And I love that. I love that he does that. Amen. Father, I just thank you for this meeting today. I thank you, Father, that you are restoring abiding in our lives. In Jesus' name. And all the saints said, there's a green bucket if you've come prepared to give. Um, we used to have a yellow bucket, but it was used for other purposes. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> How you going? Feel good?